So the next thing we wanna go over, do's and don'ts with range two, is when you're doing a color scan, make sure your lighting is proper. So right now, we're filming a video, we're in the studio, check out our lighting. We have this obnoxious white light coming down from up top. On the right-hand side, we have another one. That's really bad for scanning because you ultimately want the angle of the light coming from behind you. And you don't want it to be white light like what we have going on. So if you have it from the left, the right, in front of you, it's all going to cause the image, the coloring of whatever you're scanning. For instance, here is a fruit basket. Notice how it's making all the color more white. So it's really washing it out. But if we pause that, cut the lights, cancel the one we just did. And something that's nice is we actually, it's a little dark now, but we can turn on the LED on the actual scanner itself. And if you still feel like it's too dark, a great option is using a ring light. And what's nice about the ring light is all, they all have standard fittings so you can actually attach the tripod that comes with our scanners. Okay, so the next thing we wanna go over with range two, talking about how lighting can affect color scans is we have the RGB camera, the depth camera, the new white balance feature camera that we have going on here. So first of all, I personally love just using auto on all of them, but if for some reason you do wanna adjust that, starting with the, the depth camera, turn that off. So it auto put it at really low, it was at one. So notice I just turned it all the way up, seven. I'm not even all the way up actually. So it's way overexposed if you turn it up to 10. Five, it's already saying it's overexposed. So ultimately below five, seems like it's gonna be okay. But if you keep it at auto, it turns it down to one. And then going to the RGB camera, that keeps it actually all the way up to 10. Clicking auto off if you wanna adjust it and make it a little more dim, you can see what's happening. You're taking away some of that. But what's really useful, especially in an area like this, is the white balance camera. So again, that's on auto right now and they're keeping it right at the center. So that's ultimately what the white balance can do. We have this white light hitting our fruit basket right now. If we turn it off auto and we turn, turn it all the way up to that warm lighting, that's ultimately like we're using a yellow light, making it nice and warm, kind of making it more like that vintage feel. If you ever watch movies from back in the day, they all kind of have more of that yellowish sunset going down in the back room, warm feeling. Or vice versa, if you have too much warm lighting around you, maybe if you actually are outside, even though you never want to scan with direct sunlight, but if you're outside and there's some overcast, but it's still a little too much warm lighting and you want to make, make it appeal a little more cooler on the image, a little more blue, turn it down as you can see. It's making this fruit basket look like it's sitting in the freezer or something, that it's frozen. That's really the benefit of the white balance camera, but it's personal preference. Ultimately, I just suggest to begin with keeping it all on auto, but there's times when you definitely can adjust it. For, the, for instance, what we just talked about, if there's too much white lighting, adjust it up to the warm setting and it's gonna make the whole model that much more rich. Okay. So we've gone through those do's and don'ts with the lighting, what things to avoid, how to use the bad lighting in a proper way if you do have it and there's no other way. Now let's actually scan this fruit basket and see how it turns out. So again, color scan, I'm just gonna go with auto on both the RGB, the exposure and the white, the white light balance. And again, I have base removed. Let's see how it turns out. And you can actually use this bad lighting to your advantage a little bit here. If I just get more above it, above the fruit basket, 
that's ultimately using the lighting to our advantage because you're taking it from behind what you're scanning, which is ideal. Compared to if I was just coming at it from this angle. So just adjusting the angle of how you're scanning. And this fruit basket is a little bit small for range too, but it's still picking it up nice. Ultimately, this is would be good for the pop series, but not the end of the world. Of course, range can handle a lot larger objects. All right, let's edit this. Show you the results. I'm just gonna do one click edit. There we have it. Final result. Honestly, pretty nice. And something I wanted to, I should have brought out earlier is this little icon up here that three circles, you can actually take out the color. So you can do this while you're scanning. It doesn't mean that you're disabling color scanning. It just means that you're disabling it in the moment. Because sometimes when you're scanning something with color, it's hard to see what you've actually gone over. But if you disable it, you can see where the holes are. But if you want to keep it on color scanning the whole time, that's not a big deal either. But it turned out pretty good. All the color is pretty rich, even with not the best ideal lighting in here. Of course, with three cameras all in auto exposure, the software made it come out nice. So I hope that was helpful. Okay, so we just went over the do's and don'ts of using range two, scanning something with color, not with ideal lighting. So again, in this room we have white lights coming from all around us, above the sides and front, not good for scanning. Ultimately, you want lighting coming from behind you in the direction, same direction that you're scanning from. But there's ways around that. So we turn them off. Range 2 does have its own LED light on it. If you turn these off, you can use that. Also, we went over, if you do have a ring light, that's really handy because you can adjust it to more of that yellow light setting. That's perfect for scanning. We talked about the RGB camera, the depth camera, and the white light balance camera. I typically just keep RGB and uh, the depth camera on auto, but with white light balance, that's super handy, especially for a room like we're dealing with here with super white light coming at us. You can literally adjust that up to make it appear just more warm. You're scanning an item like this fruit basket, the, white light is washing it out, taking away the color, adjust that white light balance up a little bit, making them feel more rich and warm. Or vice versa, if you happen to be in a room where there's too much warm lighting, you can adjust that and turn it down. So all very helpful, do's and don'ts. Hope it helped you out.